Lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Come on, Jeff. You guys can come in here and grab a seat. You're first stop so that uh, I know you got a lot of things to do. Go on. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, I forgot. John, you got a prayer for us? I can make one up. <clears throat> In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, all glory and honor goes to you. We praise you for the times that we've fallen short and didn't live up to your expectations, for the times that we've sinned against you. We ask for your forgiveness, and we will try to do better in the future with your help. We thank you for this beautiful community that we live in, this country, this town, this township, this county. Uh, we thank you for uh, all the patriots that came before us that helped create this country and help us to discern what your will is for us at this meeting. Help us to understand the different points of view and come up with the best solution for our township and our village and county. And all these things we ask through your, this, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, the clerk will call the roll. Uh, Vanilla Mom? Here. Vanilla? <laughs> Angel Shake? Here. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Mark Garwin? Here. <laughs> Rob Rivera? Here. We'll call. Mm. Okay. We got a form. Okay, uh, we have a special guest speaker, Jim Glasgow. And he's going to talk about the Safety Act, which is anything but a Safety Act. It should be called the Crime Letter Outer Bill so that we get murderers and rapists and everybody else let in the street. So everyone really needs to pay close attention to Mr. Glasgow because we're going to do a read a resolution at the end that we want to uh, pass and send to the governor and all the state reps and state senators. Can we have so, Jim stand over here? Pardon me? Can we have Jim stand over here? We can, we can do that. Yeah. Jim's our state's attorney. I didn't say that. Well, I'll pretend there's a podium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is unfortunately um, something I'd never thought I'd encounter in my 40 year career that the legislature would pass a law that would give us the weakest criminal law in the, in the country when we're dealing with a city like Chicago, which is the most violent city in the country. And if you want to know what the state's going to look like after this law goes into effect, just look at Chicago. And uh, Bob Berlin and I joke that we have imagined a line. He has one between DuPage and Cook, and I've got one here. Now, we've had incursions from gang members from Chicago. Well, 90% of them are in the Will County Jail on high bonds, looking to be tried, and then follow up with the sentence. In Chicago, 2,300 people are on ankle bracelets. I've got 630 in the Will County Jail. 2,300 on ankle bracelets. 75% of them violent. And <clears throat> I don't know if anybody uh, saw the shooting in the Bolingbroke warehouse. Uh, there was one person killed, two people shot. That happened the day after somebody in Chicago on an ankle bracelet for murder. There's over 100 of those. Tracked down his eye, the eyewitness that saw, witnessed his murder, and murdered him. The next day, we have the shooting in Bolingbrook. Um, police do an excellent job. Uh, the offender is in the Will County Jail on a $5 million bond. So what does that do? What, what is bail for? Bail is to protect the public and the victims, witnesses, and to guarantee the appearance of the offender. That's been that's going to be turned on its head if this if this bill goes into effect. Now I'm very confident. I'm working on something uh, that I'm hoping will bear fruit and stop it. Um, 
I'll start with the, with the thought that the Illinois Constitution guarantees that all, all persons shall be bailable. Well, that's in the Constitution. Now, you remember the variable tax rate bill that they tried to get through? Well, they had to get a three-fifths vote in both the House and the Senate and then put it on the ballot for us. And we were smart enough to realize that was a boondoggle, especially in light of what just happened in Washington. Um, but this, there's no way that the votes are there to do that with the bail. These, both, this bill passed narrowly, and it passed in a, in a two-day cram session called the lame duck session. And it couldn't have been done if it wasn't for our wonderful friend Michael Madigan because he had to okay that. So legislators were, had an 800-page bill dumped on their desk. Okay, figure it out. And it was covering all different, different subject areas. But the bottom line is, we're guaranteed the bail through our Constitution, both at the federal and state level. And so when, we think, when this thing was, was discussed, nobody <coughs> mentioned what's going to happen to all the people in the jails. We have over 600 in our jail. DuPage, Lake, Kane, all have similar. So we're talking four or 5,000 people, and then I don't know how many are in the Cook County Jail because there's so many, 2,300 on ankle bracelets, there may not be anybody in there. So, but the bottom line is, that's just, that's just the beginning. And, and then once the inmates are out, uh, we, we have about a third of them that we can potentially ask for a hearing to detain them for no more than 90 days. If they demand trial, they have to be tried in 90 days. Now, that's the thing I'm going to be talking about because speedy trial is 120, but this is a get out of jail in 90 days. So every defendant, if this were to go into effect, would demand speedy trial on day one. Now, my office, all my attorneys have over 100 open files. They continuously have over 100 felony files that they're working on. So if they were put under the gun, <clears throat> they had to start getting all these cases ready in 90 days. We could, we couldn't do it. Plus, the crime lab doesn't turn things around in 90 days. Uh, we just tried a, an outlaw. He sat in jail for five years. Now, that wasn't our doing. He asked for continuances. A lot of times they'll do that for a number of strategic reasons. But this will change everything where they've got nothing to lose by demanding trial on day one because i got to scramble like a maniac trying to get it ready. And if, and if I announce ready on the 90th day, all they got to do is say, Judge, we want a continuance. And then I just wasted three months running my brains out trying to get ready for trial, and now it's continued for how long, right? And then there's more cases that I'm getting hit with. So <clears throat> it, the, the, the bill defies common sense, and I, and I, and I can't even imagine the, the mindset that conceived this. Um, it'll make it even worse in the city of Chicago than it is now. And let's look at the city of Chicago. New York has 3.25% more people than Chicago. Chicago last year had 485 murders, excuse me, New York had 485 murders, Chicago had 800. And carjackings, New York had 511. For 8.8 .8 million people, Chicago had 1,800 for 2.7 million people. Now that, you know, we all think of New York as this ominous place we hear about these horrible things that happen on the subway. But, you know, they've got 8.8 .8 million people and they have a fraction of the crime. So as bad as they say it is in New York, it's triple bad in Chicago. And this is only going to get worse. Now, when I mentioned the Maginot Line, um, every time we've got flock cameras. You've all heard of flock cameras? Yes. These things are truly amazing. And I've been using my drug forfeiture money to go out and try to help different agencies or cities, municipalities, whatever, to add flock cameras. And I've encouraged businesses to partner. That way we're drawing in the private sector to help protect ourselves. And then the businesses make their community safer, they make more money. It, it's, you know, it's a no-brainer. Um, we just put in a camera out at Lewis University, and the day before there was a, a crime committed in Stager, and they caught the guy in the parking lot, Lewis, with the flock camera. That's pretty crazy. The complete other side of the county. So, this, uh, the, the one thing I wanted to, to is this isn't a political issue. Um, Bob Berlin and I were on the radio on Friday with uh, 580 or 60, no, 560. 560. Yeah. And with Dan Proft. 
because you know when you start getting when you start getting partisan on something like this, you lose credibility, you lose, you lose traction. This is for the good of every single man, woman, and child in in this state of Illinois. And Lori Lightfoot, on June sixth, for the first time, she broke ranks with with the rest of the people up there. And I, I'm just you need to hear this. She talks about the residents in her community are also entitled to safety from dangerous people. She said the powers that be need to keep pressuring criminal court judges to lock up dangerous, violent people and not put them out on bail or electronic monitoring back into the very same communities where the brave souls who are mustering the courage to come forward and say, this is the person who is responsible. Now, the biggest problem that Chicago has <coughs> with their violence is in the, in the uh, black communities where the gangs are wreaking havoc, they only solve 20% of the murders. Why is that? Because people are terrified to come forward. They know they can't come forward. And so that's not the case in Will County now. But if I can't lock up the violent offenders, we'll have the same situation here. And then what will that lead to? That when, when criminals realize there's no boundaries, they get more brazen. They do even more crimes. And those people that Sit, I tested the waters coming down here. We had a carjacking in Frankfurt. The four offenders are in the Will County Jail on the million dollar plus bond. We had a shooting in a subdivision near Wedgwood Golf Course with ghost guns. Both individuals are in the Will County Jail, been there since the shooting, and they'll you know, be tried and processed. Um, every, every case <coughs> that we've been involved in, and my favorite is the one we just won a motion on, there was a carjacking on Diversity Parkway in Chicago. The knucklehead uh, did a U-turn and fled into Shorewood. We put out the tax strips, stopped the car, and uh, he's in the Will County Jail on a million dollar bond, and the, the judge denied the motion to transfer it back to Chicago, where what would have happened if that had gone through? He'd back up, be back out on the street carjacking. So, but this is so telling because Lori Lightfoot is part of the total Democratic machine that runs that area. She said this letting these people out that undermines safety, that tells the victims that there's no justice for them, and it undermines the le legitimacy of the criminal courts. If we hold violent, dangerous people account accountable, we will see a significant drop in the violence in our cities. But when you've got somebody who's accused of murder, attempt murder, rape, kidnapping, carjacking, as is now, these people are walking the streets right now today in our communities because our criminal courts are not doing their jobs and taking into consideration the danger to the community. When somebody has a rap sheet as long as my arm and commits another act of violence, they are a danger to the community by definition and should be held pretrial. And I'll be talking to you about the fact that the rap sheet doesn't mean anything under this new law. No one is going to feel safe as long as those folks are back out on the street 24, 48 hours later after they go through the bond court. It's madness. And we know it is. Um, she also talks about the fact that when, when uh, individuals know that they aren't going to be held accountable, they become more bold and more brazen. Um, <clears throat> sorry. In this new statute, they codify six different um, types of crimes where we can actually ask the court to detain. The first one is a forcible felony with a mandatory prison sentence. And then we, the, but the last prong is we have to prove that they're a danger to a specific identifiable person. Well, when you murder somebody, that may be the only person that you're really a threat to. So the ultimate irony would be they would get out because of that. And then you do the flip side on an attempt murder the person you were attempting to murder didn't die, they're still alive, so we would fulfill that requirement. Mm -hmm. This law is filled of nonsensical situations like that. Nonsensical shouldn't really be the word because of the, the danger involved, but this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Then the next section deals with domestic battery. Well, domestic and, and aggravated domestic battery, but domestic battery is only a misdemeanor. So you could wind up detaining a, a, somebody on a misdemeanor, domestic battery, and someone who commits murder gets out. Again, that's disproportionate punishment. That could be a constitutional issue also. Orders of protection is another section. Stalking is another section, and we understand those, those types of cases. 
Then the gun crimes, and they list all the gun crimes, but then again, they, they come back to, we have to prove that the person's a danger to a specific identifiable person, which we will fail to do in many of these cases, and these gun crime individuals, which are the, who are the most dangerous in our society, will be continuously getting out. Then there's sex crimes, and they pretty much list the, the bulk of the sex crimes that we would expect. Now, in all of these cases, we have to bring a petition, and the longest that, like I said, that they can be held if they demand trial is only 90 days. Now, here's the kicker. When they get out, when they get out, and they don't come back for their next court date, we can't get a warrant. All we can get is what's called a rule to show cause, which is a civil uh, piece of paper that said, pretty please, will you come to court? Now, I can tell you the the uh, actual implementation here. The police aren't going to serve these. When a police officer is going after a violent offender uh, with a warrant, he's cloaked in qualified immunity, he's got probable cause, and he can bring the SWAT team with him, and he can enter the house by force. If he's got this silly rule to show cause, he'll be going, Mr. Murder, would you please open the door? It's that ridiculous. And I work with the police, and they put their lives on, on the line every day for us. And I've had the, the immense privilege since 1992 of reviewing nearly every use of deadly force case by the police in this county. And I've not yet encountered one where the officers exceeded their lawful authority. In fact, in most cases, the police hesitate at the first opportunity to shoot and don't because they're, they're compassionate human beings and they don't want to have to shoot someone. So. Again, that's not what you see on TV. Will County is, is pretty much of a cross-section of the United States. Look, well, look at Homer Glen. You've got these, these gorgeous homes. You have a cross-section of, of the United States in, right here in Homer Glen. So it's not like we're an anomaly. So if that's the way the police are behaving here, it's way, the way they're behaving in most of the areas of this country. They take one case, one ridiculous case, broadcast it nationwide like it's going on everywhere, and it's not, it's an anomaly. This bill is a product of one of those cases. So that, part that particular part will be the, literally, the demise of our criminal justice system. Now let's look at the, the uh, forcible felonies that are not mandatory prison that I can't even bring a petition to detain. Um, burglary, robbery, vehicular hijacking, arson, forgery, kidnapping, criminal damage to property, second degree murder, intimidation, hate crimes, aggravated battery, aggravated DUI, aggravated fleeing and eluding, drug offenses. If I arrest somebody with enough fentanyl to kill every citizen of the United States of America, and that's not, an, that could happen. The, you know, two milligrams will kill you. And I just pled somebody for 20 years on a fentanyl possession case. That person, from the time of arrest to the plea for 20 years, never set foot outside the jail. Because otherwise, if he's dealing heroin, every time he deals or heroin or fentanyl or any combination thereof, every one of us is at risk. So I, I, you know, I got Narcan for our drug dogs, because if they get it on their nose, it can kill them. So this is obviously not the kind of uh, situation that any, any of us in this room ever thought we would be faced with. And then you, then you add into the fact that without, the, without any attempt to detain them, they'll be given another court date, and if they don't show up, we can't get a warrant. Now we go to misdemeanors. Class B misdemeanors. Class C misdemeanors. Criminal trespass to land. That's something that recurs a lot for us, right? In our community. The police can't arrest. I don't know what they were thinking here. Okay? So, and then it says, upon proper presentment, pre presentment of an ID, the officer is supposed to write out a summons for 21 days down the road. Well, then the officer leaves, the guy comes right back. You call, he comes out. Sir, you got to leave. I mean, it, it'll be like Chinese, what do, we, what do they call it, the, the chairs when you have it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's ludicrous, but think about how once the, once the people who, who like to break the law find out that nothing can happen to them, the numbers will grow. The Targets, the Walmarts, they'll let people all over the place, and they won't be able to do anything about it. Disorderly conduct, the same way. The 
can't be arrested. The only way to stop this early conduct in trespassing many times is through an arrest. Um, this stuff, I, I've been looking at it and to the point over the weekend I was reading the one section about how you do revocations and other things and, and it's just, it's so poorly written. One thing you can't have in a criminal statute is ambiguity or not knowing what exactly they're referring to when they're using a term and, and it's just replete throughout this entire statute. So, you know, the other thing is there's two sections where it says that simple failure to appear uh, cured by an appearance cannot be used against the individual. So the guy, the person, could not show up for court, there's a rule of show cause, and then they show up, and then they don't show up, and you get a rule of show cause, and they show up, and that could go on ad infinitum, and the judge is not allowed to use that to lock them up, which is clearly a violation of separation of powers. The, the legislature can't tell judges not to do the, their jobs and not to use their discretion. So, again, like I said, I'm working very hard to make sure that that this doesn't get implemented. Um, like I said, I've been doing this since 1982. And, well, and I forgot to give this example. When Drew Peterson solicited a, a gangster disciple to murder me when he was in prison, uh, if he had been out on the street, a free man, and done that under this new law, he couldn't have been detained. Now, my family was ter in you know, my, my kids were little, my, my wife was very afraid. We had a couple of weird incidents where it sounded like a gunshot. The uh, the fire pit in the back fell over and broke, and my son came in, I just heard a gunshot! And my wife went crazy, and I, I looked out the window, and I saw it was broken. And I said, calm down, everybody, it's just the fire pit. My wife goes, maybe the hitman knocked it over! <laughs> okay, the paranoia. <coughs> but the bottom line is, this is serious, serious business, and we have to do everything when we write our laws, when we enforce our laws, to do everything we can to protect the safety of the law-abiding citizens in the community. And, and this is just something that I never thought I would see, but the way it was done, and I mentioned Matt again again, I mean, because really, as bad as some of the intent here, it could not have happened without him. He did not have to give Grant that lame duck session. He was trying to keep his power, and he lost it. And now look what he's left as a vestige to the rest of us. These criminal charges against him are nothing compared to what will happen if this law goes into effect. So all I can tell you is I'm working very hard on the constitutional aspect of it. And uh, so uh, it's my intent that this not go into effect. So, if anybody has any questions, uh, Jim. Yes. I, you know, when uh, we we're talking, I think everybody would want to know about the ankle bracelets. You know, with the 48 hours, I think that's pretty important for people to understand because that's scary to a yeah. lot of people. Well, there's a, a provision in the law that when there's an alert that the ankle bracelet has been tampered with, they have to wait 48 hours before they can declare it as an escape. <laughs> So like, you know, let's get, let's make sure you can make the, the Mexican border. Of course, he'll be going the wrong way. Well, they won't try that. Um, yeah. <coughs> what what could uh, what could we do? Uh, email people, write letters. I mean, what, where can we where can we go? Yeah, I mean that, and and you know, uh, when people are running for office, uh, you know, anybody that's up for election in November should be pledging that they will vote to repeal this bill. Now. Unfortunately, I think timing-wise, there'll be a little bit of a lag, but if, if, but if it's clear that everybody's coming in looking to do that, hopefully something can be done to stop the implementation. Um, some people have been trying to kick back the start until July of next year to buy a little more time. I think that's just delaying the inevitable. Um, but again, hopefully I, I can be successful in what I'm working on right now, and it's going to require, though, uh, you know, the judiciary to do their job too and uh, we've got good judges in will county they set these high bonds and they're legitimate high bonds based on it's a balancing test that how how violent the offender is and that's the thing i forgot to mention the rap sheet on all of these detention things whether or not they can be detained or not isn't based on how dangerous they are anymore 
It's whether you fit into the little pigeonholes that they put in the statute. So you can have a guy that just gets out of prison for murder and does one of those forcible felonies that's not, that's not detainable. He's not detainable. I mean, right now we use common sense and we look, this is a really dangerous guy. We need a higher bond on this than we would normally get. Not going to happen. There is no bond. So, like I said, the U.S. Constitution guarantees it. The Illinois Constitution guarantees it. They don't have the legal authority to do what they did. So, I got a question. Who is publicly endorsing this? That's an elected official right now that you know bring in your sorry. position. Well, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, but obviously, there's there's Chicago people. Chicago elected officials that are doing it, and the irony there is, they're slitting their own throats. Sure. My God, you unleash the beast up there more than they've already done. I mean, look what just happened in Morris. Yeah. Did you see that? Of all places. And they have eviscerated my ability to deal with juveniles. They have just cut my hands off. We can't even talk to a juvenile anymore until they get an attorney. You can't. We used. One of, the, one of the standard tactics of, of a good detective is we got your fingerprints all over the fire, uh, all over the murder weapon. Okay, the officer doesn't know that for sure, but he says that just to see where it'll go. Now, we don't, we don't trick people into confessions that we can't corroborate. In other words, when someone confesses, we have to corroborate everything that he's, he or she has confessed to with independent evidence. So if the officer is telling something that's fabricated and the guy admits to it and it turns out it's not the case, then it, it's meaningless. But many times when, when, it, when defendants think you've got them cornered, they'll try and make excuses or rationalize and you know, make up a story, but to put enough elements in there, we can't even talk to the juveniles anymore. And this whole concept that they're too young to know what they did. I mean, that, the savagery of what happened in Morris with the child present. That, I don't care how old the person is at that point. I mean, that's the crime is so vile, the person that did that is a very dangerous person to each and every one of us. And to just say, oh, well, the prefrontal cortex hasn't quite formed yet. Okay? That's okay in a lot of crimes. And, I, and I'll sit down with anybody. If you want to talk about nonviolent property crimes and recog bonds for those kind of cases, we don't need to clog our jails with those people. But... There are so many other types of crimes, you know, the, the, especially the drug crimes, which are not provided for this time around. Uh, those drug dealers that are dealing fentanyl, they're as dangerous as any murderer. Because every, every time they sell their, their product, two milligrams will kill you. And these young kids that thought they were entrepreneurs, they were selling pills on the internet, and they would put maybe only a milligram of <coughs> fentanyl in each pill, but they didn't warn the people buying it to only take one pill. Because if you take two or three, it'll kill you. And so that's been happening all over the place. And China is dumping fentanyl in here uh, at, at a rate like we've never seen. I, yeah. People in Homer Glen have common sense. It's good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I can pitch in and get your podium. Okay. You got a place I can send it? Quick email? Yeah. Um, Lisa, you have a card. I don't. I'm sorry, but I will. You know who he is. You tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll right. get, when I get a copy of the video, I'll okay. make sure you guys get a copy of it. Sorry. Okay. And I'll be putting it up all over like I've done the other stuff. Steve, okay, so. I would make it a special one, just on his well, section. Yes. Then I combine it with the other one. That's perfect. Thanks. You know, the response that every time I, I do this or somebody, they ask the other side, he's a fear monger. He's a dog whistle. <laughs> well, I love dogs. I got four dogs, and that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim, I'll be talking about Thank this you. Thank county you. board yes, too. Yes, Again. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. God bless you guys. <clears throat> okay. We'll move on to public comment, which there are no public comments.
So we can skip that part. And then we got the Cook's report. Uh, Vicki is not here. Our administrator, Patty, is going to do that. Uh, motion to approve July 11th. 2022 monthly township board meeting minutes. No motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, now we go to my report. Motion to approve the American Legion Olivieri Post 2011 located at Marion Village at 156 24 Marion Drive in Homer Glen, Illinois 60491 as the official American <clears throat> Legion post of Homer Township. Uh, Lou is the commander of that post, and he called me today and said that they have their meetings the exact same day we have it and the exact same time. So he couldn't come. But he asked me to uh, let everybody know that we are actually going to partner with them on this stuff. So uh, they talked to our administrator today, and um, we've got information going up on the website so whenever they're having a, an event or something it'll be on our website and anybody that wants to join up with them there'll be information on how to do that so uh, our goal here at the township is help them grow their numbers he said that's their biggest problem getting the vets to know they're there and to grow the, the uh, legion there so we're going to do our best to do that and uh, other than that, he just says to tell everybody thank you very much and that uh, Legion very much appreciates it. So the next one, uh, we got a, that was a motion to approve. We approved it last <coughs> time. So, uh, well, let's do it again just for the heck of it. Just get a motion I'll start the again. motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I motion to approve resolution, no, resolution number HT 2022-08-08 RES-1, RES a resolution adopting revised purchasing and accounts payable policy and procedure for Homer Township. Well, you guys had that in your packet, and we it's the same thing as we approved before, but we're doing it again for this year. So uh, the only difference was a. Uh, you want to explain it? Yeah, uh, sure. And I don't. I didn't mean to cut you off, but our office uh, helped put this together because there was a change in the statute. The bidding threshold for contracts went up to thirty thousand dollars. So uh, the resolution makes that formal change to your existing policy. So you're in compliance with state law. That was basically it. So thank okay. You. So we need to get a roll call vote on that. To, uh, we had motion and second okay. first. Was there? Oh yeah, a motion. motion? Okay, I'll start the motion. I'll second. And then roll call. No. Yes. Garwin, Mark Garwin. Yes. And Robert Vera. Yes. And then I'm a yes. I'm Steve. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So that motion carries. Okay. Motion to approve resolution. Resolution. I don't know what's wrong with my mouth today. It's not working right. <laughs> Motion to approve resolution number HT 2022-80808 RES2 against the SAFE-T Act, that's Illinois Safety and Accountability, Fairness and Equity Today Act, and to send the governor and state representatives a uh, copy of the uh, resolution. And I'll read the resolution. Okay, the resolution says, whereas Homer Township Board recognizes the extreme harm to the safety of our community with this outrageous act signed by Governor Pritzker. Uh, Mr. Glasgow didn't mention that, but JB signed this into effect and didn't get any Republican votes. It was all done by the Democrats. Just so everybody knows. Who's in, who's in favor of public safety? Sure ain't J.B. Pritzker. And any of them are rot rotten idiots that pass something like this. Next, whereas the Safety Act is not bringing any safety and in fact will make every community in Illinois, including Homer Township, extremely unsafe. I think you've heard enough from Mr. Glasgow. Whereas this <coughs> act puts new standards on law enforcement that prevents them from doing their sworn job to serve and protect, 
to the best of their ability. And whereas under this act, burglary, robbery, arson, kidnapping, second degree murder, intimidation, aggravated battery, aggravated DUI, aggravated feeling, fleeing and eluding, drug offenses, drug induced homicide, and threatening a public official are non detainable offenses. So you can kill somebody in a second degree murder, you don't go to jail. You can kidnap some poor kid and you don't go to jail. So this is really nuts. Whereas the burden of proof is now changed to clear and convincing instead of reasonable doubt. Clear and convincing is a lesser degree. Beyond a reasonable doubt means absolutely no chance. Clear and convincing is tell me what you think and if I agree it's okay. So it's, that's another stupid thing. Whereas monetary bail is no longer going to be required. Whereas not showing up for court is not proof the offender won't show up in the future so no warrant can be issued. Instead, police have 48 hours to serve a notice to appear in court, which is a civil process. Not a warrant and allows substantially less enforcement by police. And you heard the, him talk about that a little while ago. Whereas offenders in jail do not get a trial within 90 days, must be released from jail. These cases, because of evidence and the number of cases, make it highly prob probable that jails will be empty as much as two-thirds of the jail population. <coughs> and, and whereas breaking <coughs> an ankle bracelet cannot be considered an escape for up to 48 hours. Therefore, be resolved that we, the Homer Township Board, state that we are appalled at this act, which clearly makes our communities unsafe, and will send a copy of this resolution to the representatives of the state of Illinois and the governor. So I need a, a motion to approve this one. I'll motion. I'll second. A roll call. Mike Manoa? Yes. Mark Owen? Yes. Robert Vera? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, um, we have uh, two other motions about committees, and uh, we're going to come back next month with uh, some more names because I uh, was told there were some people that we missed. Uh, we missed uh, the Kirkins, uh, Ed and uh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. They're not on there. Uh, motion to approve the Senior Expo, Expo Committee. Uh, Mike Bonomo is chair, Cindy Laha is co chair, Rose Renders. Jay Rohde, Christina Clausen, Mark Garwin, Angel Shake, Sherry Lahan, Sue Silent, Linda Cohen, and Yvonne Chetnik. So I get a motion to approve those people. It's just a question, Steve. Can we, mm -hmm. can we amend this to add those two names so it's complete for this session? Uh, can we amend it? Or? I think it's descriptive enough on the agenda that you could add them. It's, so, it's, it's related. So okay. if, you, if you want to do it. Now you have two names to add um, to the motion. I'd, I'd like the... The Kerfins. Yeah, add I, the I, Kerfins. Michelle Kerfin. Yes. Okay. Do we, we have to approve the nine minutes? So it's Michelle and Ed Kerfin. As long as there's no objection, I think you can consider it part of the original yeah. motion. And there was no Kerfin. second yet, so... Make it official. Yeah, yeah the, the attorney said, we have advice that if we can do that. The topic matter is sufficiently right. uh, specific on the agenda that I think adding two names doesn't talk. And so on the next one will be the exact same thing. I'll be adding, I'll be saying their names first so I don't forget. But uh, motion to approve the senior committee, which is different than the senior expo. The expo is going to take place September 12th. September 10th. 10th. And Mike will be talking about that in his report. <coughs> um, so the senior committee. Uh, motion to approve that committee. Mike Bonomo is the chair, Cindy Laha is co-chair, Robert Vera, Vicki Bozen, Patty Comar, Linda Cohen, Stu Silent, Angel Shake, Yvonne Chetnik, Mark Garwin, Christine Clausen, Jay Rohde, Rose Renders, and that's it. And we and the uh, uh, we didn't have a second or vote on the first proposed yeah, motion. Oh, we, well Mark was the first. Mark, I, thought no. I asked a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, I asked a question to add two names. I, oh, okay. Then we got to vote on the 
Yeah, so, so, we're, so we're motioning on the addition in addition to the two mm -hmm. names, correct? So correct. Let's, when we do them separate, let's, let's, right. let's motion on the first one for the senior expo. I'll probably start that motion. Okay. I'll second with the amendments. With, with the with, amendments with added the to the motion. Yes, with the uh, Kirkland's on there. Okay. Yes. Okay, and uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And then motion for the senior committee with the uh, Kirkland's on there also. Do I get a motion? I'll start the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. You're all good. <laughs> motion to approve Steve Bowers, the supervisor, on all the committees. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> I, get a motion? I will probably say I will start the motion. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, uh, now we have the Highway Commissioner of Brent Portfolio's report. Hello, everybody. Hallelujah, the Union of Operating Engineers strike is over. It ended on July 26th. Thank God for that because it was putting a, uh, a stoppage on labor and materials from all the, the large local quarries. It was uh, freezing asphalt, it was freezing stone, it was freezing concrete materials, uh, which was holding up a lot of projects uh, in the area. So that's over, which is a good thing, which helps us as well. So um, item B, the uh, facility build-out update. We have a number of items that we ordered that still have not come in yet. Um, and also we were we ran into a couple of delays because of the strike. So we're looking at a September instead of August uh, completion date for the build out inside the building. As far as the outdoor stuff, uh, the paving, the concrete paving on the access road and the turnaround in front of the building, um, the base is done, the, the bars are down, the mesh is down, the problem was we got rain. Otherwise we would have been pouring the concrete today. So we're gonna probably have to wait another week to, to pave the concrete because of the saturated base. Um, uh, item C, the 2022 roadway program uh, up in Forest Manor, that is complete. They did a great job, Austin Tyler up there. They completed it only a few weeks. Um, so we're looking to have a punch list walk through either this week or next week uh, to release the final 10% to them that's in retainage. Um, item D, the Farrell Road improvements. Um, I don't know if you've, you've noticed, but now they're milling north of 159th Street finally. Now the strike is over. The asphalt is available again. Um, Typically speaking, it's about a week between when you mill and they start paving. So next week they should be paving everything from 159th Street up to 151st Street. Um, most of you would probably use Farrell Road here and there, so that's welcome. Um, uh, let's see what's next. The bike trail along 355. Uh, the tunnel crossings at 167th Street and Bruce Road are both complete. The paving of the uh, bike trail is complete up to 167th Street and they're working their way north. The base is rolled out and ready for asphalt. Uh, on Galga Road, um, they're restarting construction. Again, they were held up by the strike. Um, they have a number of things to do on the east side of Galga, um, between 159th Street and 163rd Street. They have a bike trail going in there, a lot of sewer and retaining walls. And there's a drainage problem I'm hoping they're gonna fix toward the north end of that segment on the east side of the street. Um, as I've mentioned before, if anyone has issues with uh, ditches, with roadway patching, with culvert replacements, or sunken concrete, or anything on their street right away, please contact me after the meeting if you want to talk to me, or you can call our office, and Dave will answer most of the time, right? Yes. Uh, Tamling Drive is the last item. Um, it's a truck uh, cut through. It's a, it's a traffic cut through between Smith Road and Archer Avenue. Um, my staff took uh, traffic counts back in the week of the 12th of July. We found out a, a number of items that uh, we have to fix out there. The worst of all is the speeding. It's a residential street with 20 houses on it, and we saw cars going up to 60 miles an hour down the street. 60 on a residential street. Um, the vines were in the, in the hundreds of cars, even though there's 20 residents on the street. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add more speed limit signs and we're going to put in some speed bumps. Uh, speed bumps are three inches in height. They're, they're nasty ones. They're not as bad as in Chicago, but they're enough to slow down the traffic. 
and we're going to put five of them in all the way across the road. And what that's going to do is it's not only going to slow down traffic, but it's going to detain traffic to the point where before someone turns down the street, they're going to see the backup, and I'm hoping that that's going to deter them from using that as a short circuit route. Um, because if you, it, because the, the time it takes you to get from that street down to the intersection and turn on Smith from Archer, it's about the same amount of time. So I'm hoping people, a light bulb goes on upstairs and see that the delays are the same going either way. So uh, we're going to be putting up the speed limit signs next week. Yes. And the speed bumps uh, aren't in yet, but we're going to put five of those in probably the week after that. And then we're going to wait two weeks and we're going to take traffic counts again. And we're going to see how effective these things were. If they worked, the, the, uh, the issue is done. If they don't work, we're going to go back to the drawing board and we have some other options that we're going to run through with the residents and the local um, agencies. And that's everything. Hey, Brian, I have a quick question on the speed bumps. Are they tempor they're temporary speed bumps? And they are rubber. Oh, okay. So They snow plows. are anchored with spikes into the asphalt. They can be removed. So snow plows going through this, how does that? Snow, they have uh, tapered sides on them. So, so the plows will go up and down, them. right? That's first. And secondly, like I said, if they don't work, We'll be removing them and trying something else. Spikes. Yeah, they're not going to move. Them. They're not. You got to. You got to have a loader to get those things out of there. Uh, but they, they, they are safe for plows. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And our guys, you know, know that street well enough where they'll know where the speed bumps are. And we are putting up speed bump signs, so that also warns people that they're they're coming. So there's a couple of things we're telling people that it's right here. We don't want to get sued by anybody. So. <coughs> Anyways, that's um, that's everything. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brent. Now we have the assessor report, Carmen Morala. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, pending approval, we're going to be going to the Senior Expo. Um, this uh, in combination with the Village of Homer Glen and the library. Uh, it's September 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're going to be highlighting some questions for homestead exemptions, uh, anything with senior freezes or senior exemptions and also any kind of veteran exemptions um, to answer any questions out there for some of the seniors that have some questions. Uh, we like to do a little more outreach programs to try to give them give them some education. When we're looking for the information for them to bring in, you know, a lot of a lot of questions come up with some of the senior stuff, you know, do I qualify, don't I qualify? We can kind of answer some of those questions for them. Uh, so we're gonna actually be out there those days and just kind of I'll uh, go through it with some of the, so anybody that has questions. So please let uh, all the seniors know that we're going to be doing an expo. So until I have the report. Our questions and answers going to be posted somewhere for the seniors that cannot attend this expo? Yes, it's all, all on our website. Oh. Sure, yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'll stop by. Yep. Okay, Come we to got, the township office. We got a um, motion in here. Should it, it's in the wrong place, I think. So we're going to uh, do a motion to approve Homer Township Senior Committee to host the Senior Expo on September 10th, 2022, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Hadley Middle School, 15731 South Bell Road, with a budget of up to $5,000. The money will be needed to cover insurance costs and costs incurred by District 33C janitors and ancillary expenses. So can I get a motion for that? Motion. I'll second. We got to call the roll. Mike Panama? Yes. Mark Allen? Yes. Robert Vera? Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. Now we'll go to the committee reports. Um, Homer Township Senior Committee. Mike Panomo? Yeah, I'd like to start off by saying, um, you know, first of all, you know, we're, we're talking about the Senior Expo. It's an idea that came up a, a couple months ago. And uh, you know, we've accelerated, accelerated the process. And what makes me proud is we are combining different entities of the Homer Township, Homer, the Homer Glen, and the Homer Township Library. And with the list of names that are part of the committee and the people that are helping out, it's shown that we're working together. And I've always professed that us working together makes the community work better. And uh, this proves it. Um, we're in the process right now of sending out applications to all the different vendors or different businesses in the area that can, um, present our product and services to our seniors. And I expect we're gonna get some huge feedback from that. Um, over the next couple of days, we'll find out which you know people 
have uh, put themselves into the uh, process of, of being one of the vendors. Um, on the two, second Tuesday of every month, I do senior bingo, which the next one is tomorrow, and we usually get about 75 to 80 seniors that, that participate. They'll get word tomorrow that there's going to be a senior expo a month uh, around September 10th. I expect them all to participate and spread the word. Um, I, I expect this to be very successful, especially with the work of everybody putting you know a lot of time and effort into this thing. And um, with all the proceeds coming from the vendors for this event, it's going to go str straight to a, we're going to do a senior Christmas party in December. So there's going to be no profit to be made. All the proceeds are going to go towards another event for the seniors. And uh, again, I'm proud to everyone that comes, they have a great time. And uh, the Senior Expo is going to be a great, great um, thing for our community to show that we care. And that's the whole point of it. Thank you. Okay, next we have our land use committee. I don't know, we don't have a report, do we, Carmen? Mm -hmm. And so there's no report for uh, the land use committee. Uh, the task force uh, committee yeah, for... I got, I got something quick. Uh, it should say truck task force. Yeah. Um, the purpose of that committee is to make sure that any local roads that are not rated for trucks are not used. And if you see it happening, call me and tell me immediately. Um, down at 163rd Street in, uh, in Lockport, most of 163rd Street between Gauger and Cedar Road is under our jurisdiction. And there's a new subdivision over there by the name of Silo Bend. And um, they have very heavy construction traffic leaving that site. And we never gave them a, a driveway access permit because the street is not rated for their vehicles. And I said, well, if you want to use our street, pay up some money. So if there's things we have to do to improve it when you're done, I can do that. Well, they never gave us any money, obviously. They never signed any agreements. And Dave caught them using 163rd Street, was it a couple of weeks ago? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we blocked the entrance. Didn't we block, we blocked I the entrance with a loader? My truck in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Forcing them to take 167th Street. And just be warned that our, our methods might be archaic, but if we catch people with trucks on our roads that aren't rated for them, <coughs> it's not going to happen. We're going to do something to stop them. But if residents see this, please contact my office immediately. We want our roads to last a long time. We don't want to spend unnecessary taxpayer dollars fixing them because people are not following the load limit signs. Gauger Road, too. It's getting bad. And yeah, yeah. So just uh, if you see them, let me know. There's a lot of, there's an increase in truck traffic, obviously, because we have an interstate that weaves through our township now. And there's a lot of developments going on. So, uh, there's developments going on in Lockport and in Homer Glen, more so in Lockport. So we just want to keep an eye on that. That's all I had. Okay. Rob, do you have any kind of report you want? Nope. Uh, Mark, how about you? Yeah, I'd love to talk about the food drive. So I'm proud to announce that the food drive was very successful. We ran, ran it. Uh, I, well, it's the first one while I've been on this board. I'm not sure if the township's ever done one before. But, um, we ran it from the July 25th through yesterday, August 7th, so it's roughly two weeks. We collected over 3,000 items, non-perishable items, for the Lockport Fish Food Pantry. I'm sure you know who they are. They've been around since the 1980s. They've helped thousands of families. They serve Homer Township and Lockport Township. And the sad part is every week these days, um, there are about a dozen new families that show up. So the need was great, and we stepped in and helped them. Uh, Kathy and Marty Hamilton, I got to know, they're two volunteers at the pantry. They want to just thank everybody. They were over, they were overjoyed with the uh, with the items that we, we brought to them. Uh, but it's all about teamwork, and uh, I want to thank people, Steve, if you don't mind. Right. Uh, this uh, this crossed the township and the and the village. So um, I want to thank the board because uh, when I visited there and they said they're in some dire need, I brought it to uh, Steve Dale as the supervisor of the board, clerk, <coughs> assessor, everybody was thumbs up, let's get it done. So I got a lot of support in this room. Uh, Dave Medina sitting over there, 
It was arranged for a free U-Haul truck, which was fantastic. So we were trying to figure out how to, where's the collection point and how do we do this logistically. So that really helped out. Uh, free truck for two weeks and those people there at BI Rental deserve a pat on the back. Um, social media support was overwhelming. Um, Christina there, Christina Clausen and Angel uh, Shake um, with their massive presence on Facebook and everybody else here in this room and in the village were sharing the, the, the Facebook posts. I think that had that was a, uh, a huge component of it. Uh, the village trustees, all of them pitched in with social media support and some showed up to actually flex their muscles and unload the truck. Um, Meyer Foods, got to thank uh, Mike for this one. Mike went over to Meyer Foods and the manager allowed us to park the truck there in the last two days. So last Saturday and Sunday, uh, we picked up about another 500 items that way. And they also donated a $250 gift card mm -hmm. so the pantry can spend it any way they want. Um, so all in all, I think it was very good. Uh, example of true teamwork, like Mike said, when you get the township, the village, and the residents all pulling in the same direction, that's what community collaboration is all about. My brother-in-law, John Walters, uh, deserves the thanks. He was kind of like my right-hand man, whatever I needed, whenever I was overwhelmed, he was there to help. Um, and um, I want to say thanks to John. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, John. Thank you, John. Right. Yeah. Thank you Mark, for doing that. It, uh, it was a joy. Okay, we got one item under new business. Uh, we would have put the word planning commission, but uh, I just got this yesterday, so we didn't have time to put it on the agenda. It's basically something we passed. Uh, we passed the trucking portion of this probably three months ago. They, all they wanted to do was build an office in an existing building, so it's not a big deal. Um, I looked at it, I saw no, no problem with it, and now I'm looking at See if anybody has a problem with it. I don't think so. Uh, Carmen, you know, he he looked at it real close and he said no problem. Uh, Brent didn't tell me anything, so you guys didn't say nothing. So I'm assuming that I could send a, a letter back to the county saying that uh, we uh, have no problem with this. No objections. So unless I hear something different, which I don't, so then I will be uh, letting the county know this is okay. And then uh, now we have a county motion to approve all payment of bills for July 22nd, Founders Crossing Bond, Founders Crossing General, General Assistance, Open Space, Park Developer Contribution Fund, Town, Road, Bridge, and Equipment and Building. I got a motion for that? I'll start the motion. I'll second. I'll call the roll, please. Mike Venomo? Yes. Mark Garland? Yes. Robert Aaron? Yes. Steve. Yes. So with that, I got we, one item. Oh, go ahead, Brent. Uh, the uh, road district has expanded our social media presence. <coughs> we now have a Facebook page called Homer Highway. Um, it's not for political uh, uh, postings or anything like that. We want to stay out of that because it's a government-sponsored uh, website or fa Facebook page. So if you have any concerns or any applause for our work, or if you have any questions on things uh, that are local to you or you need help, it's quicker sometimes to put it on the Facebook page and we'll be sure to uh, respond to it. It also shows uh, pictures on there. I think we're put up the last couple days on our ongoing projects. So um, that's welcome. So Homer Highway, uh, click on it and like it and become a member of the uh, Facebook page. That's it. Thank you. That's probably okay. To get a motion to adjourn. I'll start the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Motions adjourned. Done. <laughs> <laughs> you guys next.